Hi, I'm Jason. Welcome to another quality video from appliancevideo.com. Today we are working on this Whirlpool freestanding range. We will show you how to remove and replace the infinite switch. To begin this repair, we must first access the rear and remove the back panels. Stop! Before beginning any repair, be sure to always disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. We must first remove the lower panel here with the two Phillips screws. Lower it down, you can just set it aside. And then there are 12 number two Phillips screws that hold the upper panel on. And then you just lower it down, disengage it from the top panel, and slide it right off. Now that we have our rear panels removed, we have plenty of access to our infinite switches. We are going to be looking at the left front dual element. Some indications of a bad switch might be the element doesn't work at all. One or both of the elements stay on high all the time. To check that, if you unplug your Molex connectors, and looking for any burnt wires or any kind of a burning smell to make sure that you don't have a wiring issue. Now with my multimeter, I have it set up to ohms and with an audible tone when I have a closed circuit, I'm going to check from L1 to H1 with the switch off. I should have a open circuit, so no tone. And then H2 to L2, I have no tone, so I have an open circuit. And then there's two terminals here that are not marked anywhere, but this is your uh, the large outer ring of the burner element. And this one is also no tone, so we have an open circuit. Now with the switch on, from H1, actually I have it set on low, with the switch on low, H1 to L1, we have a tone, so we have a good complete circuit. H2 to L2, we have a tone, so we have a good complete circuit. And the unmarked two terminals for our larger element, we have an open circuit. So we're going to now switch it to the full eight inch element from H1 to L1, we now still have an open circuit or a closed circuit. H2 to L2, we have a closed circuit. And now the two unmarked ones for our larger burner, we now have continuity. If you have any other reading than that, then you're gonna have a bad switch. So let's say we do have a bad switch. We're going to pull our knob off, remove the two Phillips screws that hold the switch in place. And while holding the switch from behind, we're gonna move the last screw, pull the switch out from behind and set it aside. With our new switch, we're going to install it from the back side of the panel and start our screws so that they don't get cross threaded. Tighten them down with our screwdriver. Install our knob by sliding it back on. And 
install our Molex connectors for our wires. And now install our back panels. To install the rear panel, you must first slide the top of the panel up under the console. Line up your screw holes. Now hold the panel and install one of the screws to hold the panel for you. And now that you got that one in, move on to the other side. While still holding the panel, Now that you've got that one held, you can finish the rest of the screws. Next, we'll install the lower panel. And there are four tabs you must engage into the back of the oven. And slide them in and then slide it up until your screw holes align. And this will complete the repair. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.